Well, first of all, congratulations. What a beautiful, beautiful film. Can you perhaps tell us a little bit about when did you, in your long collaboration, come on up, come on up, your long collaboration uh, with Garland, when did this project become something that you had in mind, that you wanted to do? How was your collaboration with him in it? And if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about how he is doing these days. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you, everyone, for coming. And probably most of you saw your names up there as uh, <laughs> people that helped bring this to fruition. So it's really very exciting. Uh, I guess the impetus for making the film was really to bring Garland's music to a wider audience, because as you saw, I mean, literally for 40 years I've been hearing, well, oh, he's so underrated, He's no, no one knows who he is, is he still alive? And, and then, and I thought, well, let me make a movie. Now, I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing or how hard it was going to be or how long it would take. And how long did it take? It took eight years. And, um, and, you know, some of you, or many of you in the audience, know that over those eight years, Garland, when, when we began, he was being, becoming forgetful and becoming sort of uh, less with it. But I, I don't remember the exact timing, but he now is in sort of late stage Alzheimer's, which is why he's not here and why at certain points in the film you sort of see me taking over to tell the story because he really wasn't able to, to do it anymore. So, you know, it's very emotional for me because at this point this is his legacy and unfortunately he doesn't even really get it. But um, maybe on some level he does and I hope I hope that he does. Absolutely. Savannah, thank you so much for being in the film. I think um, you're a gift <laughs> for so many levels. But I love your kind of like your rapport with your dad. And um, tell us a little bit about your um, participation in the film and um, how did you help navigate the whole process of like telling the story of somebody that is your dad, somebody that is an incredible artist, the legacy and the human and the vulnerability. Sure. Um, well, echoing Claire, my mom, um, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It really you know, means a lot to me. But of course, Claire and Garland, obviously. Um, so I actually hadn't seen the full film in a, in a minute, like I had seen more earlier cuts. And I was told that I wasn't going to be in it anymore, Evan. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but I guess I, I, I made it into the, into the. And she was pretty good, cut. right? Yeah, we picked, we picked her lock. Great. That was in there. Yes, <laughs> we wanted her in the film, right? Yes. <laughs> but you know, I remember when we started, you know, making the movie. I think I was in high school, maybe, or whenever the yeah. Matador scene when, was when I came back freaking out about being put on the spot. I think I was in high school, senior year perhaps, or maybe like freshman in college. Um, and I think, like, to be honest, this process having cameras at, in the house, which honestly wasn't that often. There was like just a couple shoots like in our apartment. It wasn't like, it wasn't any different than growing up was at all, like at, in general, because I grew up in venues in New York and I think I have tinnitus just from being in <laughs> so many so many concerts as a little kid. Um, so I guess to answer your question about navigating it, like it didn't, it felt very natural. It's kind of just like an extension of what I had always experienced with my dad kind of being, um, in my eyes, always a star. And so I think this was very cool for me to, to see. And of course, like, as you all saw, there's a ton of really interesting and um, visually textural archive that I had never seen in my life before you, Claire, started this process and you kind of, you know, together did all the research to, to find this incredible um, footage. So I think that was one of the more special things to 
you know, see the yogi footage. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and just, you know, all those sort of moments that I, as a, you know, as his daughter would have, of course, never seen in my lifetime until now. So I think that was definitely my favorite part. But um, I guess back to the question, it did feel like a very natural part of our family to be doing this. Thank you. And you touch upon the, the issue of the archive, which is magnificent, and how it brings like an era, a life all the time, and a history of New York as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of finding this wonderful archive and all these magnificent, beautiful, <laughs> beautifully recorded um, shows that, um, that he performed? Because the, the, it's, it's an exquisite artist film, the sound, and it's just beautiful to watch. And thank you for leaving the songs We're long. Yeah, We've, Evan and I have been working on this. Microphone, yeah. Oh, Evan Johnson, the editor slash brains behind me. Uh, Unbelievable the amount of work that we did. If if I were ever to show you the emails, <laughs> because Evan moved away from New York to Chicago, so we did everything by email and the dreaded Dropbox. But um, but finding the archive, speak. <laughs> There's two categories of archive. There's a. Uh what's out there in the world and what we called under the bed archive. Uh, Claire and Garland kept a lot of stuff and it uh, really got the film, though it took a long time to get done, rolling pretty fast. Um, and we started building the film uh, with Garland's interview so he could tell his own story um, through 50 years of interviews. Uh, and I think you really see two garlands in the film, one in the archive and one in the more modern footage, primarily from his living room couch. <laughs> uh, and my favorite part of working on the film was uh, seeing this archival garland kind of frustrated and a little bitter and just tormented by this desire for more recognition and weaving that with this more modern gar Garland who had really found gratitude for what he had and um, just peace with where he had gotten in life. And Claire started this project with the question, what is success? And I think Garland kind of demonstrates it throughout the film and it all culminates with the album, The King of In Between, when you see Garland kind of learn that and teach hopefully through this film what we should all consider our own success. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, do you wanna tell us anything about your collaboration in the process, in the project? Yes. Thank you. I'm Roger Gandhar Smith, and I am so honored to be here with you, to share, to celebrate this genius, a man we've always known as a genius, whom we don't necessarily need a documentary <laughs> film to tell us that he is a genius, but we are happy that we have this film <laughs> so that we can rerun, rerun, rerun this um, tremendous life. Not just a career. I think that um, that life is shining here on the stage. And um, that is the really provocative and I think enduring um, lesson of this life. I talked to Claire this morning and I could hear Garland screaming in the background, but he was screaming in key. <laughs> To have had the opportunity to have met him, to know him, um, is really something special. That's all I have to say. Um, if you have questions, you can ask me later. Thank you. Yes, I have more questions, but I'm sure you do too. So yes, go ahead. Um, this is a question for Claire. I had a, the opportunity to see a little bit of your 
perseverance and persistence and great grace in this. But I really want to know, in this process, which you had no idea was going to take you eight years, uh, when, it, when it became really difficult, what was it that kept you going? I think it was sort of in for a penny, in for a pound. I had spent so much of our money. At one point, Savannah said, Mom, is there going to be any money left after you finish making this movie? <laughs> and I was like, well, not a lot. But, um, but, but that was really part of it, was that I had, and Evan and I had worked so hard on it. At a certain point, we just thought, we're finishing this no matter what. And and we did, and I'm I'm sort of astonished that we're standing up here and that we finished it. But I'd like to get uh, Blair to say a few words. This is Blair Foster, our EP and guru. I just want to piggyback on what Claire said and really emphasize, because I met her in 2015, and um, I had produced a number of music documentaries and she was looking for help and I think I probably said, you're crazy, don't do this. <laughs> um, so to see her since 2015, to put this film together uh, is, is truly a great achievement and it, it's the spirit of documentary that works so well with Garland's story too, I think. What is success? this is the ultimate success that you've made this film. And Evan, I've known Evan, when I met Claire, we were working on a documentary about Frank Sinatra together, and I've seen him grown in his career. I'm very proud to see this film. They, they are great collaborators, um, and I think Claire has just done a remarkable job. So thank you, Claire. Questions? Yes, in the back. Hey, uh, first of all, uh, congrats to Garland on his amazing career, and congrats to you, Claire, on this great film. I was just wondering, putting aside the record sales, putting aside how many years went into an album, <laughs> in Garland's heart of hearts, is there one particular album that he would say in his heart of hearts, you know, that's the one that should be way up there on those lists that you always see of the greatest albums? Is there one particular one that was a little bit dear to him in that sense? Ghost Rider. Yeah. All right, well, then we agree. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, just complete congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Uh, it was so striking how in 1994, what he was singing about is so timely to what's going on today. Mm -hmm. What is next? What is next in this journey? because it's such a strong message. And no matter how big or small the audience, this is amazing. Well, thank you. I, I wish that Garland was able to continue his journey as a, as a writer. And as a matter of fact, when the Alzheimer's was just showing itself, he would he would s express frustration that I think he could no longer finish a song. You know, songwriting is so challenging for those of you out there who do it. It's so hard even when you have all your faculties. So I think he just always really wanted to have racial equality. That was his dream. And, um, you know, I think we can all in this audience say that some things have improved and some things really have not. And um, I think we still have a long way to go, and I think he believes that too. So, thanks. I like Bruce's sentiment that ends the film too, that Garland's legacy lives on. Someone not in this room will find his music and learn from it and appreciate it and take it into the future. Mm. And we love Garland. Yeah. 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 over here, yes. Congrats, Claire, and the whole team. It was a really special night. I was blown away by the, the early black and white footage of him on the streets of New York. 
and I'm really anxious to find out where that came from and who shot it. <laughs> Do you mean the the footage, the black and white footage from the yoga days? Yeah. That was one of my most delicious <laughs> archival finds because I was, someone might even be in the room, I, I was trying, because all our lives Garland had always talked about the yoga days and it always sounded, I was always like, well, there's no photos. There's no written, I, I really kind of doubted how much he was actually involved with Swami Satchitananda. And somehow I found my way to this lovely woman named Prem Anjali, who is the head archivist for the Integral Yoga Archives. And, and I said, well, gee, do you have any photos or anything? And, and, and a couple of days later, she said, well, we found all this footage. And it was so much fun. I could not believe there was all this black and white footage of him, as you saw. That was just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there was so much stuff. And I, was, and I said to myself, he was actually telling the truth. I mean, he was really there. <laughs> but that's where it all came from. And they were very generous and, and let us use it. And Phil Messina, who I believe is also here, shot the um, black and white footage in the Guggenheim. As a as an NYU student film, and uh, you know when Garland's sort of flirting with that girl and trying to <laughs> explain to her about the, the you know uh, uh, yeah, I'm over here we have this and, uh, and what are you doing later you know <laughs> I'm getting oh, well okay we we have one last question there go for it hi um, I want to thank you for keeping the black face parts of the film. I'm, in, I'm actually Vernon, I'm, in, I'm actually in the film. Hey, Vernon! Woo! Feeling self-congratulatory, you know, about a sweet old guy. He had a fucking right to his age. Yeah. <laughs> fucking right to it. The music business was built. That whole blackface thing, it was built on. So when you talk about him being bitter, he had a fucking right to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So y'all can go home, tell your sweet old guy. I'm, I'm fucking boiling right now. Mm. Sorry, I don't want to spoil the party. No, I'm... Right. The business is built on it. And by the way, what's so hilarious about life is that, it's, that it's, it seems to be persistent. It shows up in fashion. Mm. That was like the most confrontational and uncomfortable thing that he did mm. in his career to do that. Yeah. And um, like we pretend that the beloved Al Jolson doesn't exist, nobody talks about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Louis Armstrong was active when Al Jolson was active. Imagine that. <laughs> you had to be in situations where that dude was performing and he had to do it at the same time. And that essentially never really changed. Why do we, why do we even see it? But you know what? I'm going to stop. He's, he was one of my heroes. He still is. He's an incredibly brave, incredibly talented performer. So when y'all walk out of here, remember this. You know? What the music business is built on. Thank you, Vernon. That was great. Thank you for that. that says it all. Um, I've been getting the signal that we're going to have to move on to the next phase of this wonderful night, which keeps getting better and better. Can you tell us what you have in store for us? Well, I've cajoled a few people to come up here and do uh, a couple of Garland's songs. Yeah. And, um, that will be uh, Lori Anderson on the electric violin, uh, Brian Mitchell on keyboard, James Maddock on guitar, and the young Savannah Jeffries on vocal. 
and I will now go get to sit down. Thank you so much. Please stay. Queen. She 
back to that time in the night I'm gonna miss my baby Jean Cause she treat me oh so right And the New York skyline Is calling me home tonight Making my world so bright. One side, we got four sides. Sometimes we got no side at all. Thank you. 